Oh, we lost Bob. You almost have to not too much. Oh, yeah. Let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. Rob Catanello is absent and excused. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Welcome all. We have no minutes for approval, so we'll go right to the greetings. We have a new sound system, which sounds a little funny right now. Sounds good. Maybe I should move back from the microphone. Okay. A um, couple things I want to cover in announcements, and I'm going to step down below and do some presentations. One of the things I think everyone should know in this room is Madison is one of the leaders in shared services. We share a tax assessor with uh, Milburn. We share a building code department with Chatham. We, we, run, we basically are the building code department for Chatham and Madison. Health department, multiple towns. IT services, multiple towns. And one of our most proud and fairly new one is our shared court, which originally started with the Chathams and Harding and then recently included, uh, we added Mars Township. And normally when you add things, especially this, uh, town the size of Morris Town should be have growing pains, and that was certainly not the case. Municipal courts fall in the jurisdiction of the Superior Court of New Jersey, and uh, on a regular basis they come by and, and inspect and see how we're doing. And so this letter came to uh, Judge Troxel, so I just want to read part of it. Dear Tro Ooh, let me start again. <laughs> Dear Judge Troxel, on March 31st, 2015, I met with Frank Champy and his staff to conduct the annual review of court records and procedures. I'm sure it comes as no surprise that under Mr. Champy's guidance, the court continues to shine. In addition to being an expert in municipal court administration, Mr. Champy is, is an excellent leader, which is evident in the way the court conducts business. The Madison Joint Court possesses high volume of processes, a high volume of cases, and Mr. Champy and his staff are well organized, courteous, and professional, both internal and external court users. So kudos to our uh, court and Mr. Champy's great work. A reminder that um, this Wednesday, the 27th, is our Historic and Streetscape Preservation Symposium. We'll be at the Public Safety Building, second floor, <coughs> meeting room starting at 7 o'clock. It's going to be a two-part program. And the first part will be a presentation from a panel of experts, including a preservation consultant, architect planner, a real estate broker with expertise in historic homes, a contractor with expertise in preserving historic homes, and a tree consultant. And then the second half will be discussion that all those that attend will be able to talk about what they've just heard and then talk about what might work or might not work for Madison and make recommendations that will be taken to back to this council and also planning board. So please uh, join us. That's Wednesday, 7 o'clock, Public Safety Building, and tell your friends. This past uh, week on uh, Wednesday was the second annual Madison Avenue Challenge, Fairley Dickinson versus uh, Drew University. This year resulted in a Fairleigh Dickinson 8-3 victory. Drew won it last year. Uh, I know most people will say, well, it's too bad because Fairleigh Dickinson is in, is in a neighboring town, but their ball field is in Madison, so the trophy is remaining in Madison, so we are victorious. But it was amazing. People drove a uh, distance. I talked to one uh, family, drove from Lebanon Valley area in uh, Pennsylvania, and just talking about what a great town it is and what a great opportunity it was to not just play on a college campus, but to play right in the center of town at Dodge Field. So kudos out to uh, Ken Ware, all of a sudden I couldn't read my writing here, and Steve Coppola for putting it all together, and um, it, more to come. Now I'm going to come on down to do some proclamations, and we're going to be doing a lot of presentations, and we also have a swearing in. Obviously, the door is always open. You're free to go whenever you want, but I would ask if people could stay until they get through to the proclamations, and, and then you can leave, but you're welcome to stay for the whole 
uh, council meeting. We have a lot of things going on today. Christine Hammett, please come forward. And all the members of the Madison Shade Tree Management Board, please come and join us. And any friends of the Shade Tree, don't be bashful. Come on up. One of the things we do in Madison is recognize our volunteers. We have a, quite a few committees and boards, as you can imagine, to run this town, and people serve on these committees and boards for free as volunteers, giving endless hours of uh, volunteer work for the borough of Madison. And if you do it for five years or longer, we want to recognize the effort on behalf of the borough. And I think Christine would stay on even longer if she could, but she is moving to Spring Lake, and so we will truly miss you and we thank you for your service to the Madison Shade Tree Management Board from 2008 to 2016 and as you I know you'll come back and visit and you can see our beautiful tree lined streets and the effort from your work so Christine thank you so much I miss Madison thank you Kate McElvaney, please come forward. And any DDC members can come up and join us. Any DDC members? And your family. Is your family here? Okay, if they're not taking pictures, they can come up too if they want. So hopefully everyone in this room knows what the first Saturday in May means to the borough of Madison. What is it? It is May Day. The day we work so hard, again, a gallant effort of volunteers. We get over close to 1,000 volunteers putting in probably on average four hours a day. So in one day, 4,000 hours of volunteer work to the borough of Madison. And at the end of the day, we have such a beautiful town. And one of the things we want to do to make sure we know who's volunteering is give them t-shirts. And we have a contest every year, and Kate is our contest winner this year. And we have two DC, DDC members here. And so, you recognize this? <laughs> ah, this is the shirt that Kate designed, and you will see all over Madison on May 7th. Would you like to say anything about, describe your shirt, or you want me to talk? Okay. <laughs> but we do have two key things. That's part of the mayor is to put people on the spot once in a while. I see you have our rose for the Rose City and the beautiful clock in downtown. So thank you. And this is yours. Show you great art. Okay, I'll see you with your art on my chest on uh, May 7th. <laughs> Jim DeVivo, and do we have some play playwrights in the room also? Come on up, all the playwrights. Come on up, cool. All right. Not to make you nervous, but in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to give your, your name and the name of your play so you can start thinking about being ready to do that. <laughs> Makes me nervous. 
<laughs> All right, this is a proclamation. The Madison Young Playwrights Month at Writers Theatre, Madison, New Jersey. Whereas Writers Theatre, founded in 1986, has nurtured the creative writing skills for all ages through New Jersey Writers Project, co-sponsored program of the New Jersey State Council on the Arts and Department of State. Whereas Writers Theatre has performed has produced performances and offered new plays to local and statewide audiences as a result of its dedication to respective playwrights, and whereas Writers Theatre brings a unique program to community through its local in-school playwright initiative, the Madison Young Playwrights Program, and whereas Writers Theatre will present performances of student written work during the in-school assemblies presented this spring, and whereas Writers Theatre can continually received a positive response from students, teachers, and parents for its effectiveness in working with all students. Many of them have realized the benefits of self-discovery and expression through playwriting. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of the borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim April 2016, Madison Young Playwrights Month. In doing so, I extend the very best wishes to the Writers' Theater and to all the young writers, not only here, but throughout our community, for continued growth and success. Further, I encourage the public's participation in celebrating and commending our young playwrights for their creativity and artistry and expression. So, well done. So, we're going to start right over here. Looks like someone from Kings Road School. And state your name and the name of your play. Um, my name is Rishi Arud, and my play is A Day in the Life of Leo Benderson. And what grade? I'm in sixth grade. Sixth grade, so you're no longer at Kings Road, are you? so you moved to the junior school. But you're showing your Kings Road pride right there. <laughs> All right, and so again, you're, you're, I'm going to add in your name, school, and grade, and your play. Uh, my name is Artha Basingham. My play is called Political Nightmare, and I'm in sixth grade at MJS. I'm Libby Nebris. My play is The Story of Oz, and I am in fourth grade. My name is Faz Yassin. Um, I'm in fourth grade. My play's name is Space Race, and I go to KRS. My name is Henrik Hamilton, and my play is Stevie and his quote unquote friends. I am in fifth grade, and I go to KRS. My name is Jacob Jordan, and I wrote the play Who Gets What, and I am in fifth grade. My name is Emma Michelotti. I wrote the play Wanted, and I, and I am in fifth grade. My name is Jenny Calandrillo, and I wrote the play The Magical Snowflake, and I am in the fifth grade. Thank you. Here's your proclamation. You can take it over. Well done, everyone, and best of luck. <laughs> All right. you can, and don't forget to check yourself out on either Fios or cable. I'm the number one rated show in Madison. <laughs> yeah. Another proclamation, and I think it's apropos to uh, we just recognized artwork and then playwriting, and it emphasizes that education at an early age is so important. So we want to recognize the Week of the Young Child and Harriet McCarter and Allison. Kentos, thank you. Please come forward. Harriet is with the FM Kirby Children's Center, and Allison is with Acorn Academy. Whereas the Week of the Young Child was first established in 1971, recognizing that early childhood education lays the foundation for children's success in school and later in life. And whereas the purpose of of the week of a young child is to focus on public attention on the needs of young children and their families and to recognize that early childhood programs and services meet those needs. And whereas the Northwest Chapter of New Jersey Association for Education of Young Children, which Allison is the chapter president, and other local organizations in conjunction with the National Association of Education of Young Children are celebrating the week of the young child April 25th through 29th, 2016. And whereas these organizations are working to improve early learning opportunities, including early literacy programs that can provide a foundation of learning for the young children, 
And whereas teachers and others make a difference in the lives of young children in the borough of Madison deserve thanks and recognition. Whereas celebrating our youngest learners is the theme of 2016 Week of the Young Child. And whereas public policies that support early learning for all young children are crucial to young children's future. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Connolly, the mayor of the borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim April 25th through 29th, 2016, as a week of the young child, and encourage all citizens to work and to, to make a good investment. We try to get, encourage all citizens to work to make a good investment in early childhood in our community. So thank you for all you do. And if you want to say a few comments. Um, the children are the future, and they're not just you know, you guys as a family's future, but they're the nation's future. So it's really important to start early and give them a quality preschool education. On behalf, no, it, it's short. <laughs> On behalf of the FM Kirby Children's Center of the Madison area YMCA, I would like to thank Mayor Conley and the Borough of Madison for acknowledging and supporting our work and the importance of early childhood education. Never has the need for it been greater, nor has it been clearer how much of a role high-quality early education plays in giving children a path to future success. The Kirby Children's Center remains dedicated to providing the highest quality academic, physical, and social and emotional preparation for all children, and to working with advocacy partners such as the United Way of Northern New Jersey and Pre-K Our Way to ensure that every child in our state can have access to an excellent early education and the right start in life. Thank you very much. But there's another proclamation. Hmm. Patty, can you just step away from uh, do your duties and come down? Up. That is surprise. Yes. Sometimes we have to share our weeks, so this is actually this is not, this is not share a week. This is next week, but Patty is here to accept this today. <laughs> Municipal's, Municipal Clerks Week, May 1st through May 7th, 2016. Whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk is the oldest among public servants, and whereas... The Office of the Municipal Clerk provides a professional link between the citizens and the local governing bodies and the agencies of government at, at other levels. And whereas Municipal Clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of neutrality, impartiality, rendering equal service to all. And whereas Municipal Clerk serves as the information center on the functions of local government and community. And whereas Municipal Clerks continually strive to improve the administration of affairs of the Office of the Municipal Clerk through the participation education programs, where Liz Osborne, our regular, our municipal clerk, is down at a conference right now, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, province, county, and international professional organizations, and whereas the most, most appropriate, they recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Municipal Clerk, notably Elizabeth Osborne, Patty Macaluso, and Mary Vaccaro. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, Mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby rec recognize the week of May 1st th through May 7th as Municipal Clerks Week, and further extend our appreciation to our Municipal Clerk, Elizabeth Osborne, and to all Municipal Clerks for the vital services they perform and the dedication to the communities they represent. So, Patty, thank you for all you do, and please thank everyone in the office. So you get to accept this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Chief DeRosa, Justin Kovacs, please come forward. And Justin, family, or whoever wants to hold the Bible for you. Left hand of the Bible and raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I state your name. I, Justin Kovacs. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. And 
impartially. And just to perform. And just to perform. All the duties of. All the duties of. <coughs> volunteer firefighter. Volunteer firefighter. Madison Hose Company Number One. Madison Hose Company Number One. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear. I further solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. And bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And the governments established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. And the authority of people. And the authority of people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Another. So that's another volunteer firefighter joining our group, and Chief Lou can uh, tell you all about becoming a volunteer. The mayor of signs, and then we'll get you a copy. We are now moving on to uh, reports from committees. So, if you don't want to stay, well, just as a reminder, we have to keep the doors open. So, if you're going to talk, keep it quiet as you go out. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We'll get started with the reports in just a second. I know. <laughs> It's a long one. Yep. I have one communication to read into it. It's the letter that you've already read, but it's okay. acknowledging it. Okay. <clears throat> Nothing, now. <laughs> Should we exit fee? Sorry. <laughs> All right, reports from committee utilities. Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would have thought the utility report would have a little more uh, interest, but I guess not. <laughs> I don't think so, Matt. No, huh? We had announced it would stay. All right. Well, starting with the electric department, they installed new pole and anchor at Fairwoods Road in Ferndale. They also installed poles, primary and secondary cables, and transformers on Plain Street, replaced a bad transformer at Rose Avenue, and did numerous streetlight repairs, service upgrades, and markout requests. The Water Department. I've mentioned before that we're doing uh, testing, uh, state-mandated testing that continues. It is ongoing. The results for uh, portions of it, unfortunately, are not back yet, but once we have them, we'll speak about them. There were 52 requests for locating and marking underground utilities for homeowners, contractors, and other utilities. It's a pretty impressive number for two weeks. 88 requests for locating and marking underground utilities for shade tree plantings, and four curb boxes were checked and water was turned off and on for inside plumbing repairs. In the spirit of shared services, which the, men the mayor had mentioned earlier in this meeting, there is discussion going on of the possibility of shared services and part of what the Water Department is responsible for. It's premature. I don't have anything really of substance to report, but it's uh, good to hear that those kinds of discussions are going on throughout our government. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Finance Borough Clerk, and if you have anything for health, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. No, I don't have anything for health. Okay. For the finance, the borough is committed to openness and transparency in government. To that end, we have compiled a five-year study of employees' gross W-2 earnings, which will be available on Rosenet. Two new employees started working for the borough, one in the water department and one in the engineering department. Also, two DPW employees received automatic annual steps totaling $11,369 is pay period. The payroll department reconciled and processed the first quarter IROC with the state of New Jersey. IROC stands for Internet Report of Contributions, 
and it's a lengthy certification process that confirms pension contributions and information. On April 15th, $446,000 of debt payments were paid for the bonds associated with the 2008 capital projects, including the new public safety building, Hartley Dodge Memorial renovations, and the new fire trucks. The borough also made a monthly payment to the Board of Education on April 15th in the amount of $3.1 million. The final approved state budget document was sent to the Division of Local Government Services. And finally, the CFO and finance staff are working with the various departments to update the way where revenues are reported. The borough has over 300 different revenue lines from construction permits, food licenses, bingo licenses, planning board revenues, parking permits, burglar arm registrations, and alike, and it is important to keep proper track of the funds. Okay, from the borough clerk's office. May, 7th, May 17th is the voter registration deadline for the primary election. The, boroughs, the borough clerk's office will be open until 8 p.m. that day. Mail-in ballot applications are also available in the borough clerk's office or online at morriselections.org. And finally, the 2000 ele 2016 electric utility rebate is now underway with forms available in the borough clerk's office, posted on RoseNet and inserted into the upcoming electric utility bills. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Public safety, Ms. Vitali. Thank you, Mayor. Last Tuesday evening, 15 members of our fire department participated in a live fire training for three hours at the Morris County Fire Academy. A Class A burn building is the newest addition to the county fire training facility, which enables firefighters to train under real fire conditions in a controlled learning environment. Firefighters were exposed to thick, heavy smoke and 650-degree temperatures. Firefighters practiced advancing hose lines using ter th thermal imaging uh, cameras and positive pressure uh, ventilation. The Madison Volunteer Ambulance Corps accompanied the fire department and was on hand in case of any injuries and to practice their firefighter rehab techniques. There were no injuries. The fire department is scheduled for two more live burn training sessions later this year. Five, vi five volunteer firefighters completed a 24-hour vehicle extri extrication course titled Vehicle Rescue Hand Tools. This past weekend at the Morris County Fire Academy, 13 firefighters have completed a four-hour bleeding control class. This class, which is offered free by Morris County OEM, is open to all the Morris County first responders. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Community Affairs, Ms. Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the Chamber of Commerce, Ladies' Night Out is Thursday, May 5th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, you can register at Short Stories, which is at 32 Main Street. There'll be gift bags there for the first 100 participants. From the Madison Downtown Development Commission, uh, May Day is soon upon us. It's going to be held on Saturday, May 7th. It's not too late to volunteer. Just email Lisa Ellis at ddc at rosenet.org to sign up. The Madison Farmers Market will be returning to Central Avenue between Main Street and Cook Avenue for the 2016 season on Thursday, June 2nd. The market hours will again be 2 to 7 p.m. Shoppers can look forward to weekly musical performances, an expanded list of participating vendors, and a frequent shopper card program. The Madison Chamber will also again feature their Look Good, Feel Good Madison program, which will showcase businesses in the fields of health, wellness, and beauty every week. And finally, at the Thursday meeting of the DDC, um, they approved funding for the town's first Madison Storytellers Festival on Saturday, June 11th. The event will be held on Green Village Road between Main Street and Kings Road and in various other downtown sites. The event will bring together Madison's unique arts and culture community for celebration, performance, readings, and interactive and arts education events, showcasing Madison's unique qualities as a creative and cultural destination. So please check out the Madison Storytellers Festival page on Facebook for more information um, as it is released. Thank you, Mayor. Public Works and Engineering, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, ooh. 
First for Public Works, uh, crack and sealing uh, road work continues with John and Valley completed recently. Uh, the road and sewer teams have been working jointly to get the manholes ready for the mill and overlay project. And over the next month, the Public Works team will be planting over 100 trees for the Shade Tree Commission. Um, in the, from the sewer department, sewer cleaning work has begun in the most problematic stretches of sewer pipes in town. From engineering, roads, uh, we expect the mill and overlay project to begin later this week, assuming we approve it tonight. Milling work will be done this week with paving taking place next week. Roads being done include Court, Parkside, Hillcrest, Highview, Union, Seven Oaks, uh, the access road to the Madison Recreation Complex, and the library's two parking lots. Uh, a pre-construction meeting with Cefeli and Sons uh, to initiate the 2016 road improvement work is scheduled for this Thursday, and sidewalk replacements throughout Madison will also take place under this contract. Uh, the staff have completed the submission of plans, specification, and cost estimates for the Prospect Street Road Reconstruction Project to the Local Aid uh, Division of uh, New Jersey this week, confirming the recently awarded $172,500 NJDOT grant. Some preliminary markout work will be completed this work to confirm curb locations for traffic calming work. After the review by the New Jersey Department of Transportation, um, they will either comment or accept the plan. Final cost estimates will be produced and an appropriate request will be made. Uh, sewers, the plans and specifications for the North Street pump station were received from Kleinfelder last week, confirming earlier cost estimates for the pump and electrical panel replacements at this location. If funding is advanced, construction bids can occur this summer for the onset of work this fall. Uh, a second round of cleaning and closed circuit TV inspection work of the Madison Chatham Joint Meeting Trunk Sewer between Garden Ave and Brook Lake was completed overnight last night. Uh, and specifications for sewer inspection, grouting, and lining work recommended by Kleinfelder will be available in May for bidding this summer. Uh, from the Water Department, well E turbidity readings have continued to decline within acceptable ranges for public water supply connection. A full set of water quality tests will be completed and the well will be reconnected for water supply purposes. Uh, pad mounted transformer replacement is scheduled for later this summer. And the water main replacement plans on Central, Greenwood, and hydrant replacements on Lathrop and Gibbons Place will be designed for summer, uh, will be designed this summer for bids for the fall. And from the parks, bids for Danforth Road Sports Field site remediation phase two were opened uh, Thursday, April 14th. The apparent low bidder requires an award resolution in order to schedule the work in September. Other maintenance improvements such as irrigation, aeration, topsoil, and receding to the existing fields have been requested and will be quoted over the next month for possible construction this fall if funding is available. The Memorial Park uh, skating rink field uh, has its final topsoil and seating is scheduled for this week so the new playing surfaces can be established over the summer and be ready for play for the fall. Uh, the softball scoreboard at the Madison Rec Complex is being installed this week. And last but not least, the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection made its first round of comments on the Memorial Park letter of interpretation request submitted in January. It is hoped the comments will be addressed in May and the LOI finalized in June. The state is under no statutory timeline, but we will continue to encourage them to complete the review. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mentioned it very briefly already, but uh, I have noticed we have a new sound system here. I want to thank Jim Sanderson and Russ Brown for your work to uh, make sure that uh, is up and running. And I think it's very clear that, Jim, it is working very well, so you're free to go whenever you're ready. So thank you. <laughs> Communications and petitions. One letter received April 21st, 2016 from Rebecca Muller, Administrative Specialist with the New Jersey Courts to the Honorable Gary Troxell, Joint Municipal Court Judge regarding the annual review of the court records and procedures. Ms. Muller noting the excellent leadership of Court Administrator Frank Champy. Just want to re reinforce that. Uh, it was a great letter. Thank you. All right, we are now on the first of two invitations for discussion. This is limited to any items on our agenda discussion and resolutions are listed uh, on the consent agenda. If you want to comment on any, any of those items, please step forward. You state your name, your address, and the agenda item you want to discuss. And please try to keep your comments to uh, three minutes. And the agenda discussions are related to all the ordinances related to capital appro appropriations. And in the electric capital, general capital, uh, general capital for fire, and uh, general capital for water. Anyone wishing to speak, please step forward. 
Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. We go on to agenda discussions. Mm. And I'll re remind the council that we are, uh, again, just as I mentioned, discussing all the ordinances that are up for introduction. It'll be assumed that all discussions will happen during this se section. And when we go on the voting, we will skip the discussion part. But if you have an issue to be brought up at that point, just raise your hand before we start the roll call. And the first one, appropriations funds from Electric Capital Improvement Fund for Jim, your project. Jim is going to take them. Mike Piano's mother had emergency surgery. Yeah. Parts of the world, she's 93. That's where he is. Okay, uh, thank you, Mayor. There are uh, six ordinances from the Electric uh, Capital um, improvement fund on for discussion and ordinance introduction this evening. Um, these map identically to the five-year capital plan that was discussed during the entire budget process. Um, I can go through them one at a time real briefly. $210,000 uh, for the installation of historic lampposts and fixtures along Kings Road. If you go up to the green lampposts out here on this side of, I'm pretty sure that I could push one over there. They're that neat. You actually will see tape holding together the plates on the bottom where the uh, electrical uh, linemen get in there to uh, do the wiring and everything. It is very, very much past due for that work to be done. Michael did talk about all of these items, um, so uh, that's the first one. The second is um, submersible underground transformers for the commercial business district. I'm sure most people know that all the power lines in downtown um, are underground. Um, there's some major vaults. There's one in front of Lou Riccio's building on the corner of Cook Avenue. There's another in front of where Seasons used to be. These are underground vaults that do get water in them from time to time. Special transformers are needed in there that um, can actually get wet um, and even be submersed. And um, that was uh, on the five-year capital plan, and, and there's an ordinance for introduction in that. Um, $120,000 for the installation of a new security fence at Kings Road and James Park. No issues with the fact that the, the fence is just getting old, and it's important for us to make that, um, that area as secure as possible. Um, in addition, there's um, an exterior um, stairway to the substation there. That's a se separate ordinance um, for introduction. And um, the purchase and installation of security cameras at Kings Road and James Park substations um, was something that was discussed during the uh, five-year capital plan and something that, that's clearly important to make sure those areas are secure. And finally, um, with uh, great joy, uh, I'm glad to say that we're going to be introducing an ordinance this evening, hopefully for $35,000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of automated meters and handheld meter reading device on uh, May 12th. Um, in just a couple weeks, um, we're going to have a company come in and give a very um, detailed presentation. Members of the Utility Advisory Committee and all the members of council are invited to come. It's um, uh, will let me know ahead of time if we, so we don't violate any sunshine laws, but um, if there's going to be more than uh, three members of uh, the governing body there. But uh, we're going to be um, listening to a detailed proposal um, from a company called Elster, which we think is the one that we're going to select. Uh, they have the ability to have meters that can go in and and uh, be read both electric meters and the water meter cap registers. Um, we'll have a handheld device. We will no longer be using the paper and pencil. We'll, um, by you know, within the next three or four or five months, be going to a handheld electronic device. And those meters uh, will be able to, for the moment, be read from that handheld device. So um, if it's a pit meter or if it's um, a meter on a house, you could stand at the curb and press a button and get that meter read to go into the machine. Um, ultimately, um, all of those meters will be uh, able to be implemented in a wider um, type of download system that would use radio frequency or, in this instance, a mesh network with leaping repeater meters that that information could be backhauled and brought straight to the borough through a fully automated system as opposed to handheld. So those are six different ordinances that I kind of blitzed through quickly. Um, in, uh, out of respect for time, but if there's any questions, I'll try to answer them now. Pat? Um, so two quick questions. For the meters, you feel comfortable that the amount of money is sufficient based on uh, the conversations with the different vendors? Yes. Even if we change yes, for whatever it's, reason? It's, it's okay. going to be a toe in the water, no pun intended, I guess, for the water utility, but it's going to be a test. Um, the handheld, we, we get the handhelds and we'll get a number of electric units and a number of water meter caps mm -hmm. that we can go out and test and just make sure that we understand how it all works and that it's working the way we want it to. The, the other thing is, and it's on here this year as a purchase out of the electric utility, but I think 
in reality, historic lampposts should probably be coming out of the general capital fund. I realize that they're run by electricity, but they're not really part of our distribution network. And if I was in a town that didn't own an electric utility and I was putting lampposts downtown, I would assume the town would still pay for them out of their general capital fund. If the town didn't have an electric utility, utility, yes, but in the past we've always paid for them out of the electric utility, but it was in the five-year plan, so that's where we funded it for this year, but clearly in the out years. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I understand that, but I think in, in, for good accounting purposes, this is not really something that should be paid out of the electric utility because it's not really part of the utility. I understand it's an electric item, but you know we don't pay for light bulbs or this fancy new piece of equipment, even though it's electronic. I think... You know, again, I, 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 if, if, if I was in a different town I, I, and I didn't have an electric utility, I wouldn't be going to the electric utility company to put them in. I'd be putting them in myself and paying for them out of general capital. Jason. I think it's just an I, I think it could be justified either way. It's also often been called electric and light utility uh, department. And uh, some towns, like, don't own their lights that they might belong to JCP&L or yeah. esc and So it would be comparable in that way. I, I think the ones on the poles belong to them, but... I think the, or I mean, in, in other towns. But I think if you put your own historic lampposts yep. up downtown, and their single purpose is for lighting the downtown, it's more of a general capital improvement to the town as opposed to enhancing the electric utility. My thought. Yeah, it, it depends. It? There's, I believe, it's South Orange that has the gas lamps still right. to this day. From the PSNG manages all those. That's not mm -hmm. owned by that town. Ben. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the, the company that we're most interested in providing meters, uh, do we know of other towns or other utilities, well, more importantly, other utilities that have used the same metering? Yes, our, our good friends in uh, um, South River and Seaside both use this technology. Mm -hmm. We were comparing two, and um, there is certainly comfort in knowing that they've been successfully deployed in, in both a small town, Seaside, and a right. much larger town in South River. Good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now those uh, various ordinances are listed for introduction. Now, appropriation of funds from General Capital Improvement Fund for water and water capital for various public work purchases. Bob, is, is this you? Well, I, I can do it, Mayor. I mean, Bob's resting there. Uh, um, all, all, all of these items were discussed during the capital budget process. Ordinance 22 is appropriating or requesting to appropriate 180,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for, it's described as a large truck, but it's actually a large dump utility truck. These are the vehicles that do the plowing during the winter months, carry rock salt, the brine. Th these are our workhorses, so probably it's not a good description there. The, these are large vehicles, and this also includes the attachments. Ordinance 23 is requesting $70,000 out of cap General Capital for a two-ton dump truck for the DPW department. These are miscellaneous trucks that you'll see them supplementing the large vehicles, the snow plowing, they carry the rock salt. Um, they're general utility trucks around town to carry materials. Ordinance 24 is a similar amount, $70,000 for it, again for a two ton dump truck. This vehicle would be assigned to the sewer department as opposed to the general DPW fleet and it, the funding would be coming from the general capital improvement fund. Ordinance 25, is $70,000 from the Water Capital Fund to purchase a mini excavator, which is a multi-purpose uh, piece of equipment for us, has many uses, and that would be assigned uh, specifically to the Water Department. Ordinance 26 is $30,000 request from General Capital Improvement Fund, and this is to replace the windows at the garage that the mechanics use to repair the vehicles at the DPW yard, that the windows currently are in poor condition. And the last one for, uh, that would fall under David is Ordinance 27, which is a request for $10,000 from Water Capital. And this is for miscellaneous well upgrades as needed during the course of the year. Any questions or comments on those ordinances? Well done, sir. Okay. And Lou DeRose is here for the fire department. Okay. Next item is the uh, capital funds for the fire department. Chief Lou. Good evening. We'll keep it quick. Um, ordinance 28 is an ordinance for uh, $42,000, which is for a replacement of one, replacement of, one of our uh, staff vehicles, um, particularly our 2005 Dodge Dakotas that go away, which is in 
pretty bad shape. Ordinance 29 uh, is for $15,000 for uh, from the Capital Improvement Fund to, to do some antenna and cabling uh, work at the Midwood Water Tank to replace the fire department on the fire department's radio system. Uh, when they were up there a couple years ago, the antenna had been pretty well eaten. It's been up there since 97, so it's a fiberglass antenna. It, it needs replacement. And the coax took a shot with ice a few years ago. <coughs> so we're just going to replace just the antenna and the coax. Uh, ordinance 30, which is an ordinance um, for $12,000, which is to replace our uh, three of our multi-gas meters, our five gas meters that we use from everything from confined space to natural gas calls to uh, CO alarms and uh, any other odd smells and odors. The ones we're presently using and have in service, um, the manufacturer is no longer going to be or is no longer supporting them, so um, they're out of date, so those are just going to be upgraded for that. Ordinance 32 is for $11,500 for uh, four new sets of firefighting turnout gear. Firefighting turnout gear has a uh, life expectancy of approximately 10 years uh, for the NFPA. Uh, we kind of stretch it out a little bit beyond that. Newer guys get some of the stuff that's in decent shape because they're not exposed to the harsher elements. But uh, the garments do get degraded over time. Um, UV light is our worst enemy, actually. Um, it, it really beats them up. We, we repair them, but approximately about 10 years, the garments are pretty well beat up. So there's four new sets for that. And then the final one is $8,000 um, for a reusable forcible entry training prop. Uh, this is a, uh, a training tool that's a life-size door made out of steel. Uh, it was designed and developed by uh, some FDNY uh, rescue company uh, guys. We saw it at a show a couple years ago. And uh, it's pretty durable. Um, replacement stuff on it is just a matter of buying uh, dowels and some shims, wooden dowels, to simulate the forces needed to, to force this door. But you can uh, force doors swinging in, swinging out, and a whole host of other things in between. So it's a good training tool. Um, for us to do that now, we have to wait till we get an acquired structure. We usually get to break the door open once, and it's only the two or three guys that get to do that. And there is a science to breaking doors open efficiently and effectively. So this will help us tremendously. So that's... Uh, my capital project for this Question, year. Questions or comments for the chief? Uh, on that last one, is that something we can help train other departments with, too? The, uh... Yeah, it, it, it'll, you know, it sits in the corner till you need it, and uh, it is available if uh, another department wanted it, whether they come here or you can put it in a pickup truck and transport it. Uh, I mean, it's got some substantial weight to it, but it is mm -hmm. movable. Okay, those ordinances are listed for introduction. Ordinance 31. Uh, the final one is my jaws of life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that we were really going for. Um, Good spot. I'm just trying to find it on here. Oh, yeah, $12,000. We're replacing our original set of Jaws of Life, which was donated by the Rotary Club back in 1976. Um, we, we've gotten our money's worth out of it. Um, we've saved many lives with that, but uh, it is a very old tool. Um, it's not serviceable anymore. We're having issues with feathering and, and controlling it. And the manufacturer just can't provide the tools for it or the parts for it anymore after all these years. So it's a bigger tool. It's an older tool. Um, we're not going to throw it out. We're going to use it for a display. But uh, it's time to move forward, and that's what the 12000 is for, to replace just the tool um, that's part of our extrication arsenal. So. Okay. Any questions on that? Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and last discussion item, appropriation of funds, general capital for, and water capital for various engineering improvements. Now it's Bob Vogel. Got you nervous before, but now I did. Yeah, the yeah. truck's sorry on. about that. No, nothing about. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So the first ordinance uh, is Ordinance 33-2016, dash twenty sixteen, one hundred thirty thousand dollars general capital improvement for storm sewers. In twenty sixteen, uh, that uh, request covers uh, design and permitting for both below woods and Elmer box culvert, and uh, various operational um, uh, funds uh, to purchase new grates, catch basins. Uh, for miscellaneous inlets and some stream stabilization work that can be done in-house uh, through the DPW. 
<coughs> Next ordinance would be 34-2016, $470,000 from Water Capital Improvement Fund, the Sanitary Sewer Improvements Program. Uh, that sanitary sewer improvements program covers the manhole lining, which is currently under design with Kleinfelter for 285000 Includes some uh, lights and ladder improvements, which were recommended by Kleinfelter in their asset management report to us uh, in some of the below-grade uh, pump stations. Uh, there is, uh, I believe there's uh, <coughs> improvements on West End Pump Station, um, uh, Rachel Avenue, we decided that that was a good location for a generator, and so we wanted to put in an emergency, <coughs> separate emergency generator on Rachel Avenue and purchase a standby generator, and I think David had already dropped that uh, estimate for the standby generator on my desk, so that can be purchased immediately. Um, and then uh, miscellaneous uh, video and main repairs, uh, which uh, generally are uh, mobilizing a company like... Uh, was uh, held by uh, the joint meeting uh, last night, um, which is Russell Reed and or uh, the uh, uh, New Jersey uh, water main uh, to go and do uh, uh, storm sewer cameraing and maintenance for us. <clears throat> One quick note, I think the revised agenda says it's coming out of the general capital fund, not the water capital fund. Correct. Thank that makes sense. But the ordinance well. is correct. Right. Thanks, yeah. Pat. The uh, ordinance 35-2016, 190,000 water capital improvement for 2016 water improvements. Let's see here. Uh, that work covers what had not been appropriated in January for water main replacement. Uh, there is uh, upgraded uh, SCADA systems um, uh, work that will be done uh, this summer on the water facilities. Uh, a master permit update will be submitted to DEP and uh, miss, uh, some well, well roof repairs <coughs> which were mentioned in the Hatchmart Asset Management Report um, have to be done this summer as well. Uh, then there was a number of, uh, of uh, items also identified by Hatchmart, uh, the most interesting of which would be chlorine room updates and uh, a SCADA system redesign. Uh, for the entire system instead of when we rolled out our digital SCADA system originally, it was just for well D and tied some of our other uh, wells together. This will be a more comprehensive design of the overall <coughs> system uh, to have it uh, function uh, better and report better for us uh, moving forward. So that is the extent of the balance of uh, appropriations under the Water Capital Improvement Program. And let's see what else we have here. <coughs> Uh, 38-2016 is a additional uh, funding request for the award of uh, from the Open Space Trust Fund for the Bailey Ellard Sports Fields and Site Remediation Project uh, off Danforth Road. Um, we, uh, as uh, Pat had mentioned in his report, uh, bid that project and uh, got some reasonably uh, um, well-grouped uh, pricing from uh, uh, a fairly large number. I believe there was uh, eight uh, bidders on the project. Uh, the low bid, apparent low bid of which was uh, Vollers. However, the apparent low bidder was still over the appropriated amount, so we need to make up that difference in, uh, in a funding ap appropriation at this time uh, so that we can go ahead and uh, award the contract to Vollers next, uh, next uh, meeting. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, I think this is the last, um, is Ordinance 39-2016. Uh, 485,000 general capital improvement fund for North Street pump station. Now this project obviously is probably the oldest uh, uh, as far as general capital projects in the borough. Uh, we have had a redesign done from Kleinfelder as well who has been our sanitary uh, sewer consultant for about a year, year and a half at the stage of the game. And um, they have come up with a different uh, budgetary uh, number uh, it is, I, b I believe, in order to cover all the costs for uh, new pumps and um, uh, new electrical facilities at the North Street Pump Station, uh, which is part of their design project, which was received last week, um, they are recommending that we appropriate an additional $350,000 uh, to cover all the costs anticipated for the bid and award of that project this summer. Uh, if there's any questions about any of those items, please feel free. Any questions or comments? Pat? I actually didn't have time to find this, but I think for the last item, we're actually, 
this is the, it's three hundred fifty thousand of additional dollars. This is money we're just taking out of the current general capital fund, Jim. It's not money that was originally budgeted for this year, but we want to get it done. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next item on the agenda. There are no ordinances for hearing. And so now we're on to our second of invitations for discussion. This is when anyone in the public may comment on anything. Please step forward, state your name, your address, and try to keep your comments to three minutes. Anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And we go to the introduction of ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? The ordinance, ordinance is scheduled for first reading. Have a hearing date set for May 9th, 2016. Will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinances for first reading. I ask the borough clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 17 2016, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating 210000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for purchase of new historic lampposts on Kings Road. Ben? Uh, Mayor, I move Ordinance 17 2016. I'll second that motion. And just a reminder, there will be no discussions unless you raise your hand as I say, roll call vote. Roll call vote. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rao? Yes. Ordinance 18, 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating 125000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for purchase of submersible underground transformers for the commercial business district. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 18 2016. Second. Roll we'll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkaway? <coughs> yes. Mr. Rao? Yes. Ordinance 19, 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating 120000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of new security fence at the Kings Road and James Park substations. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 19 2016. I'll second that motion. We'll call a vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rao? Yes. Ordinance 20 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating 30000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for replacement of existing outdoor stairway at the Kings Road substation. Mayor, I move Ordinance 20 2016. I'll second that motion. We'll call a vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rao? Yes. Ordinance 21 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $20,000 $20, from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase and installation of security cameras at the Kings Road and James Park substations. Uh, Mayor, I move Ordinance 21 2016. Second. Roll we'll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rao? Yes. Ordinance 22 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating 180000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund to purchase large truck for the Public Works Department. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 22 2016. I'll vote. second it. Roll we'll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rao? Yes. Ordinance 23 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $70,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund to purchase a two ton dump truck for the Public Works Department. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 23 2016. I'll second it. Roll call vote. <coughs> Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rao? Yes. Ordinance 24 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $70,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund to purchase a two ton dump truck for the sewer department. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 24 2016. I'll second it. 
Roll call a vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ordinance 25 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $70,000 from the Water Capital Improvement Fund to purchase a mini excavator with accessories for the Water Department. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 25 2016. I'll second it. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ordinance 26 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $30,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund to purchase windows for the mechanics garage. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 26 2016. I'll second the ordinance. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ordinance 27 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $10,000 from the Water Capital Improvement Fund for well upgrades in the Water Department. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 27 2016. I second the ordinance. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance 28 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $42,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for purchase of fire department vehicle. Mayor, I move Ordinance 28 2016. Second. Roll we'll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ordinance 29 2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $15,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for replacement of the antenna for the fire department radio at the Midwood Water Tank. Mayor, I move uh, Ordinance 29-2016. Uh, Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ordinance 30-2016. Ordinance at the Borough of Madison appropriating $12,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund to purchase new multi-gas gas meters. Mayor, I move Ordinance 30-2016. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitale. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Walkowitz. Yes. Mr. Rowe. Yes. Ordinance 31-2016. Ordinance at the Borough of Madison appropriating $12,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of a new set of Jaws of Life rescue tool. Mayor, I move Ordinance 31-2016. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ordinance 32-2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $11,500 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of four new sets of firefighter turnout gear. Mayor, I move Ordinance 32-2016. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ordinance 33-2016. Ordinance at the Borough of Madison appropriating $130,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the 2016 Storm Sewer Improvements Program. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 33-2016. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ordinance 34-2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $470,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the 2016 Sanitary Sewer Improvements Program. Mayor, I move Ordinance 34-2016. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitale. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Walkowitz. Yes. Mr. Rowe. Yes. Ordinance 35-2016. Ordinance at the Borough of Madison appropriating $190,000 from the Water Capital Improvement Fund for the 2016 Water Imp Improvements Program. Mayor, I move Ordinance 35-2016. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. 
Mr. Walkowitz. Yes. Mr. Rowe. Yes. Ordinance 36-2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $35,000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of automatic meters and a handheld meter reading device. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 36-2016. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ordinance 37-2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $8,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of a reusable, forcible entry training prop. Mayor, I move Ordinance 37-2016. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ordinance 38-2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Ordinance 40-2015, appropriating $200,000 from the Open Space Trust Fund for the Bailey Ellard Sports Fields to increase the appropriation from 200000 to 240000 Mayor, I move Ordinance 38-2016. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance 39-2016. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Ordinance 18-2012 appropriating $485,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for improvements to the North Street pump station from $485,000 to $835,000. Mr. Mayor, I move Ordinance 39-2016. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Well done. Okay, consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a, certifi a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mr. Mayor, I move Resolution 137-2016 through Resolution 152-2016. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan. Yes, but I will abstain from Resolution 142. Mrs. Vitale. Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rao? Yeah. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Public safety, $30,453.79. Health and public assistance, $21,147.04. Public Works and Engineering, $179,846.04. Community Affairs, $49,186.27. Finance and Borough Clerk, $3,694,455.60. Utilities, $791,581.67. A total of four million seven hundred sixty six thousand six hundred seventy and forty one cents. Motion. I'll move the bill list. A second. Any discussion? Roll we'll call vote. Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitale. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Walkowitz. Yes. Mr. Rowe. Yes. Okay, new business, I'd like to make the final following appointment and request council confirmation to the Shade Tree Management Board, Alice Wade of 36 Green Avenue for the unexpired term through December 31st, 2017. So moved. Second. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Walkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. And with that, we are adjourned. Okay.
We bag it pretty good. Nine eleven. Okay. Nine eleven. Not bad. Well done. Thank you very much.